Hello everyone. As per usual, this is Jared Taylor from the Biology 112 teaching team here at UBC. In this video, I would like to continue the concepts introduced in the previous video on amino acids by talking to you about protein structure. If you haven't yet watched the amino acid video, then I encourage you to do so before watching this. Okay, you are no doubt waiting for it, so here is the question for you. Proteins? Yes, that's right, proteins. This is a favorite topic for me because my background is in protein biochemistry. Proteins are a huge deal in biochemistry because they are the macromolecules that provide almost all functionality within cells. If a cell has a job that needs doing, it is probably a protein that answers the call. As I discussed in the previous video, proteins are composed of amino acids that are linked together in a chain using peptide bonds. Looking at a small peptide chain, we can observe some key features. First, the chain has two distinct ends. One end has a nitrogen-based amino group, and we call this end the N-terminus. At the other end is the C-terminus, which has a carbon-based carboxylic acid group. Along the length of the chain are the side chain R groups that repeat in a regular pattern, although recall that there are 20 possible side chains used in proteins. These R groups stick out from the peptide chain. The atoms and bonds that do not belong to the side chains are known as the protein backbone, shown here in green. Notice that the backbone contains atoms that are capable of making hydrogen bonds. Okay, let's talk about actual protein structure. And to do this, I will use the protein shown on the screen as an example, ribonuclease, also known as RNAs. As you can see, the structure is quite complex with all of the side chain atoms shown. To simplify it, let me show just the peptide chain backbone without the side chains. Please note that the actual protein doesn't look like this. The ribbon structure shown here is simply our way of representing the protein shape. When looking at this protein, we can easily see some different levels of structure. Most obvious is the overall structure with the polypeptide chain folded around itself, forming what looks like a haphazard shape. Looking more closely, we can see smaller structures within the folds. The peptide chain forms three helical structures in different positions. There's also a couple regions where the chain passes by itself in parallel stretches. Looking again at the overall structure, we can also see the chain itself, which starts at the end terminus and runs towards the C terminus. And so clearly, the protein has different levels of structure. There are four such levels, and we need to talk about each of them in turn. Let's start with the easiest of the four, which we call the primary structure. The primary structure is simply the order of amino acids as they are linked together in the polypeptide chain. By convention, we always start at the end terminus and read towards the C terminus. Here, I am showing some of the amino acids from RNAs. Let me simplify the chain before moving forward. The next level of structure is the secondary structure. The secondary structure is formed when the amino acid chain folds into smaller structures within the protein. There are two main types of these secondary structures that we need to worry about. The chain can wrap around itself to form a helical structure that we call the alpha helix. Or, the chain can pass by itself in multiple parallel stretches. Since these parallel stretches often appear to form flat sheets of the chain, we thus call them beta sheets. Both alpha helices and beta sheets are held together by numerous hydrogen bonds between backbone atoms. The alpha helix hydrogen bonds run parallel to the long axis of the helix, as shown here. On the other hand, beta sheets use hydrogen bonds between neighboring strands in the sheet. You don't really need to worry about the details of this until second year biochemistry. Here in Biology 112, you just need to keep in mind that secondary structures form due to hydrogen bonds between backbone atoms. Moving on, we come to the third level of structure, known as the tertiary structure. The tertiary structure is formed by the alpha helices and beta sheets folding up together to form the overall three-dimensional shape. As you can see here, the final RNA's folded shape involves its alpha helices and beta sheets interacting with each other. 
If I was to show this schematically, which I will do, it would look something like this. Notice that both regions of the beta sheets and all three alpha helices are represented here. The tertiary structure of a protein is due in large part to non-covalent interactions between the side chains within the protein. For example, in this region of RNAs, there is an inner core of hydrophobic side chains in close proximity to each other. These side chains are packed together inside the protein away from water. This results in a large number of induced dipole to induced dipole interactions forming between these side chains. Please note that the arrangement shown here isn't accurate as I am not showing the side chain positions in three dimensions. In another region of the RNA structure, we can find a number of hydrophilic side chains, both charged and uncharged, packed together. These side chains can use a combination of ion to ion, ion to permanent dipole, and hydrogen bonds to interact together. Now if this looks complicated to you, don't worry, it is complicated. Thankfully, here in Biology 112, we will keep it simple. We will only ever consider the interactions between any two amino acids. For example, the ion-to-ion -ion interaction between an aspartate and a histidine, or the hydrogen bond between a threonine and a glutamine. And so, we come to the final level of protein structure. Before I talk about it, it is important to note that not all proteins have this level of structure. The requirement for this level of structure is that the protein must comprise two or more individual polypeptide chains. As you saw earlier, RNAs consists of a single amino acid chain, and therefore does not qualify. This final level of protein structure is known as the quaternary structure. For this, let me use the protein shown here as an example, hemoglobin. Hemoglobin comprises four separate amino acid chains known as subunits, as shown here. These four chains interact with each other to form the final functional protein, and therefore, this protein has quaternary structure. Like tertiary structure, quaternary structure is largely held together by interactions between side chains. Here though, the side chains are located between the different subunits. Interestingly enough, these interactions are largely induced dipole based using hydrophobic side chains. This is something we'll discuss in more detail during Biology 112 lecture and in future biochemistry courses. And that, dear students, is a whirlwind tour of protein structure. We will go into more details about the different levels of protein structure and the non-covalent interactions that hold them together during Biology 112 lecture.